Okay, we're gonna have some fun with Docker right now. So we are going to spin up a Docker server and then we are going to run a web server application on it. So first off, I'm on DigitalOcean. Let's go ahead and create a droplet that we can use. Um, this will be Docker test and let's get the cheapest one. Um, if you've not used DigitalOcean, it's a lot of fun and it's a cheap way to explore Docker um, in a destroyable way. Um, I'm going to go to applications and I'm going to click on Docker. So it's basically Ubuntu, but it has Docker pre-installed. Um, it's really easy to install Docker on Ubuntu, but anyway, that's easy enough. Add my SSH key and go. Um, so there you go, that's creating. Uh, while that's creating, let me show you some commands. And once again, I have a link for $10 of DigitalOcean credit. That is a referral link that's down there in the description. So if you want free credit to play around, you can use that. While that's going, let me show you the Docker commands that we're gonna use today. These are the basic commands. If you look at all of them, there's a lot, and it can be a little daunting, but the, the basic commands are pretty simple. There's Docker run, which will take any image, it will create a new container from the image, and then it will start that container, um, which is different from Docker start. Docker start starts an existing container that is not running right now. So when a container is run with Docker run, you can stop it, Docker stop, give it a name or an ID, and it'll stop it. And then if you want to restart that container again, Docker start will restart that container. So if you were to run Docker run four times, you're going to create four new containers from that image. Um, just important to know because that confuses a lot of new people. Docker PS gives you a list of all your running containers. If you do PS flag A, then it's going to include all your stopped containers, which is very useful because sometimes you want to see how many containers you've accidentally created over time. And then Docker RM will remove a container, delete a container by name or ID. Okay, so that is probably created. Yeah, sure, why not? Let's go ahead and snatch that IP address out. And I'm going to add an Etsy hosts um, entry just to make it simple. Let's see. Do, 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 do. Let's call it docker.me. So now docker.me is my new Docker machine. Um, and I can SSH root at docker.me. And do that on a second tab as well over here. I might not need a second tag tab, but yeah, I'll do it. Okay, so we are logged into our Docker uh, virtual machine, and you can see that I have the Docker command. Yep, there's all your Docker commands. Yep, a little bit daunting. So the first thing you wanna do is Docker login. Um, and Docker login will allow you to either create a new account or log in with existing credentials on Docker Hub. Now you can change this to point to quay.io or some other Docker repository, or maybe you have a private repository, but by default, it's gonna be Docker, Docker Hub. I've already logged in, so I'm good to go. So there we go, let's clear that out. So once you're logged in, you can now run containers, any public container that's been released, just kind of like think of it as a GitHub repository. So I can go Docker run, um, and then there's a company called Tutum or Tutum that has this hello world. That's just basically a hello world web app. Let's say this is my full blown web application. I've built it and I've put it up to the Docker hub repository. I can now run it on any machine. We will get into how to build this in the next tutorial but I feel like it's a lot easier on Docker to learn by just running existing containers. So if I say Docker run, the first thing it's gonna do is it's gonna pull all the layers um, that it needs to run that. And kind of, this is one of the reasons I recommend using DigitalOcean, because this is pretty fast. They have a really great internet connection, um, or any VPS server for that matter. Um, so all these layers are basically the changes that they've made on top of the files on top of the Docker file system. So maybe this layer right here was installing Apache. Maybe this layer here was adding a few files to the file system. Maybe this layer was configuring the box a little bit. So my box is running right now. If I go over to my other window and I go Docker PS, you'll see that I've got a container that is running right now. It's got this ID. Um, let me zoom down a little bit because that seems kind of crunched up. Yeah. And now, of course, my screen's acting weird. Okay, here's my container ID. Um, here's the image that it's running from. Uh, that's the command that it ran. And you can see that it's exposing port 80. Um, and then it's got a name of tender hawking. Um, so let me go to docker.me port 80. And this will not work. Docker.me port 80 does not work. The reason that does not work is because it's exposing a port into the Docker 
Damon, but the Docker Damon is not exposing that port out to the rest of the world. Um, and so if you want to expose a port, you actually have to run it differently. Let me go with Docker. I can actually do like a control C over here. Um, let me run that again, Docker run. And this time I'm going to give it a port to expose out to. Let's say 8080 is 80. So I'm going to map the containers port of 80 out to my server, my web server's port of 8080. So now I can access it. And um, that's a great feature for Docker. And the reason they do this is, say you want to run five copies of your one web application. Well, that web application exposes, say, port 80 or port 3000. But we want to run that as four different ports because we want to run different copies of it. So it makes a lot of sense um, that you have that, that feature. So there we go, let's run it again. And as you know from before, I hit run. So now I have two containers that I've created on my machine. So let's go Docker me 8080. And there you go, hello world. I'm now seeing my Docker web application. Um, let's go back here and you see that I'm seeing some logs um, that everything's coming through. And now let me go ahead, control C and stop that. So if I go Docker PS flag A, I've created two copies of this, uh, of this web server. So let me go ahead and I can, let me just go ahead and delete both of these now. I'm gonna copy this container ID, docker rm kill you, docker rm kill you. So now PSA, I have no containers created, no containers running. So let's say in a standard scenario, I'm going to run, say four copies of my container and I'm going to load balance between them. So I could do something like this, docker run, um, I'm gonna give this one a name, web one, so I can refer to it by name. Port, you'll be 8081, coming from port 80 inside of Tudum slash hello world. I should just pronounce it differently every time I say it. <laughs> so there we go, that one's gonna run. And I'm also going to run you as a daemon. I'm gonna do flag D, uh, which runs it in the background. So you've noticed here, I've got this run command with flag D, flag name, flag P. That's the most daunting thing about Docker to me when I was learning this a while back is lots of flags. It feels like, is, are, is there gonna be an endless amount of flags here? Because honestly, most command line applications, you have one flag, maybe two. Docker, you can have up to four or five. And so if you, if you in your mind, just tell yourself, hey, gonna be a lot of flags, I just gotta deal with it, um, then you'll be fine after a couple days. There's only so many flags. So let's run the exact same thing. Web two is gonna be port 8082. And web three is gonna be port 8083, and we'll stop with three webs. So now if I go Docker PS, I've got three, three web instances running. Web one, web two, web three. I can get to it, port 8081, port 8082, port 8083. And you notice each one of these has a different host name, uh, which is a Docker ID in this case. So that's kind of cool. Um, now I could add an engine X instance that would load balance between these three. Um, and it would look to these different ports. Uh, I could do a lot of different cool things. I can also now start and stop them by name. So docker stop web three. And now that's not going. If I go docker ps, I only have two running. If I go docker ps dash a, I've got three in existence, but it exited a while ago. So now I can start web three again, docker start web three. So that's kind of the basics of Docker. And in the next video, let's get into running or building our first Docker application, building our first image so we can push it up to the repository and run it from anywhere.